So, you want to play Idol Master Shiny Colors, but don't speak a lick of Japanese. And that's totally okay. You need almost no Japanese knowledge at all. I think uh, for most players, about three kanji is going to work for you. I'll try and point those out while we go through our tutorial here. Got some cats in the background. Um, but today we are going to be creating a new account. I'm going to try and get through a lot of info very quickly, but most likely this will be at least two different streams or two different YouTube videos if you're watching the archives. Um, but going to try and, and knock out most of the, the early easy stuff to get you started, get you producing idols, and uh, and if you're you're really getting hardcore, more hardcore than the tutorial gets, I've got links to uh, to different things to help you figure out what to do next. So let's get started. So the very first thing is you are going to need the shiny colors link. So I am posting that in the Twitch chat and I am going to be linking everything at the bottom of the YouTube video for the archives. So when you start up, it'll look a little different than that. Because I am logging into my current account, but what we're going to do is log out of the account, refresh the page, and start a whole new account. Um, but I am just trying to figure out where the hell I go to log out of this account. Here's account. It's a Bandai Namco. Log out. Okay. All right. So we're logged out. Now we're hitting that shiny colors link again. And this should get us into a tutorial here. Idol Master, shiny colors. Perfect. Okay. So um, you can log in with an Enza ID or just start as a guest. We're going to go ahead and log in. We're going to use Bandai Namco. Ooh, do I even have an email account to use here? So we're going to sign up. Let me see if I have a throwaway email. This is how prepared I came here. All right. Um, Smurf email. Okay, now here's the tricky part. No matter what, if you're coming in here, you do have to say your territory of residence is Japan. I am not emulating, so this is all online. So if you use a browser, good question. I totally skipped that first step. So how do you actually play Shiny Colors? Um, so I play on a browser. You can also play on your phone. The trick is um, you can either play on your phone's browser, and there's actually going to be a link to that. Um, when you go into Shiny Colors on your browser, the first time you get in, it's going to be kind of weird and, and choppy, but um, there's actually a button somewhere when you go in on the browser um, with your phone that you can make a shortcut to the game on your phone, and then whenever you play it from then on, it's going to be full screen. It's going to work just like an app, and that works for me. That's what I use. Some people, they use the actual native app that just got released a few weeks ago, um, but you are going to need a VPN at least to download it from the Google Play or the Apple Store. I don't know if you need a VPN to keep playing it, but I just use the browser and it works fine for me. So this is on the computer browser right here. So here is my date of birth for everyone. July 5th, 1990. We're going to keep you logged in. Terms of service, we agree. Okay, so that's the only tricky thing. If you've already made an account, Okay, oh, so you need a Japanese account. Got it. And then uh, I need to figure out how to log into this old email real quick. Okay, and we're in. Account creation is complete. Two ends up. Heading back to Shiny Colors. So, like I said, if you have already created an account and you said something other than. Um, Other than Japan, I believe you have to completely make a new account. I don't think you can uh, change that once it has been added to the So as you can see there, I just chose a name for the account. 
The game volume is louder than normal. Apologies about that. Can you guys hear me over the game volume right now? So once you get in, uh, what you're going to do, unless you happen to read Japanese fairly well, is you'll actually just click the menu here, and this bottom button says Tutorial All Skip. We're going to skip all the tutorial. Game is louder than me. Okay. Um, then you still have to do a little bit of tutorial right at the end here. Once we get through all these, we can go into settings and lower the game volume. You're just going to spam click a bit, click where she tells you to click. I think we're almost done here. And then we'll go through all the game menus, since we need to go into settings anyways. Okay, now this is going to pop up. It's just asking you to accept the terms of conditions and everything. Uh, usually the bright pink button is the correct thing to press. I do accept the terms and conditions. You're going to get some login bonuses. So every single day you log in, you're going to get new stuff. Jewels are the nice shiny thing you can use to roll out gotchas. There's a first anniversary event going in, so there's two different logins. Um, then you will get some cutscenes of the current idols that are featured. So we're going to watch these because they're cute. And unfortunately, if you fall in love with one of these cutscenes, since they are the new characters, it typically means you're not going to be able to reroll them. So it feels bad. But you can always work towards it. This Reams A card is pretty sick though. I'm a little jealous my wife has it and I do not. New Tenka support card, and we'll get into what produced cards are and what support cards are in a little bit here. So at least numbers are fairly universal. You can you can tell we've got about two more days on this if you're watching it live. And then um, after you see the current featured cards, you will, will see the current event cards. Um, and if you're not getting in two days before the event ends, there's a good chance you'll be able to get some event cards. But where we're starting so late, we'll get maybe uh, one or two of them. Good rule of thumb for event cards, always get at least one copy of each card. Because you can always get more merges later, but you can't get the very first card after the event's over. Okay, and then we're getting some cutscenes, so... Um, the three options you have here, this is auto mode right here. Where it'll just automatically play after the characters are popped. You know, just like a visual novel. You got two times speed and four times speed. So we're going to blast through this real quick. If you happen to like listening to Japanese voices, feel free to go through the cutscenes on your own. And I believe every cutscene can be replayed from the menu. Okay, and then it's going to get you into the current event page. Tons of stuff on here. Yep, all the all the skipping, giving you a little bit of seizure. Cho, welcome back to the chat. Crunch, welcome back to the chat. Okay, so you're just gonna hit the little back button. It's gonna say like, hey, welcome to the game. Like I said, always these pink buttons, just like thanks, accept, okay, all right, get through. Okay, so here's the main screen. There's a lot going on here. Um, I am going to show you everything on the left here first because they're kind of like your main menu. Um, this top right one, actually we'll hit real quick, is your Enza account. So if you ever need to do anything outside of Idol Master with your Enza account, like adding friends or joining groups. Oh shoot, thank you. Yes, please please fix my stream for me. Yeah, we got some, some overlay here that we definitely do not need and I should have did. Appreciate it. Okay. Okay, so we've got Mono here. Um, so this this ends it. You probably won't need for much unless they do start doing um, uh, like different events for it again. I think right now 
you can do a couple of ends of missions for points, but you're going to have to go to the Discord to, to figure that out. We're not going to cover that. So, top left, looks like a mailbox. It is, in fact, a mailbox. It's just talking about a whole bunch of different events. Usually, you won't need it, but the nice thing is, if you come in here and, and you are on, like, Chrome or something, you can right-click, translate to English, and it's usually fairly legible. We apologize for the maintenance extension. Free feather jewels. Here's when you can get them. Like, you can read through most of these events with just a right-click translate to English pretty easily. If you can change your nickname, you may take some time to show it in the game. Like, it's uh, it's pretty legible a lot of the time. Google Translate's getting pretty damn good. Alright, second option. Looks like a little present box. It is, in fact, your presents. You can grab them one at a time here. So this is 300 feather jewels. The second tab is just showing what you've already grabbed. So don't even worry about it. And the bottom right button gets this big concerning message that pops up and you're like, wait, do I cancel it? No, it just says if you're grabbing over a hundred things at a time, it may not work. So that's okay. Hit okay. Grab all your presents at once. Done. Third menu. We're getting a little tricky here. This is the shop menu. So, very top left shop here is the money shop. You can tell because of the money icon. Money is the uh, free currency you can get in game. And this shop has a lot of good stuff. So, training tickets for leveling your idols, gotcha tickets for getting new idols. And usually, anytime you see something that's like a hundred, you, you want to buy it right away because it may be temporary. It's usually like event stuff, it's super cheap, it's only a hundred. So typically you want to grab anything that you see that's like a hundred because it's free, pretty much free, easy stuff to get. Um, the second shop here is the premium shop. A lot of this stuff requires uh, real money jewel. You can see in the top here, it does separate between real money jewels and free jewels that you've gotten from the game. Um, I absolutely hate that they changed it to jewels instead of like banana coins because now you can't really tell whether you need to spend free jewels or money jewels on something until you try and buy it and it's like you've got zero and you go to negative three thousand so then you're like oh this one requires paid jewels um, but there are a few things in here that only require free jewels as you can see we've got 400 and goes down to negative 100 and they're going to be near the end so like training tickets and gotcha tickets um, are something good you can buy from the premium shop here. It's about the only thing, typically. Um, the next shop is going to be the event shop. So as you play through event missions, you're going to get event currency. And these are those two cards we saw at the beginning of the stream. Um, Want to make sure that you get one copy of every card that you can from events. And uh, if you have time to actually grind through the events, Make sure you get every copy of these cards very first thing, because they're the only time-limited thing. Everything else is, you know, some jewels or some tickets or some, some gotcha pulls. Um, you can grab these first items here. They are little cutscene scenarios. Yeah, yeah, any bundles in the shop are always going to be real money current. Aim Slayer, welcome to the chat. Um, the backgrounds, yes, good call. I believe these backgrounds are limited as well. Backgrounds are limited to the event so far, yeah. So um, so grab your copies of the characters. If you can't quite afford them because they're pretty expensive, the backgrounds are very cheap. You may as well grab them, kind of like in the uh, money shop if you see something super cheap. Sorry, my phone died with that verification email. Okay, and then, um, so these are also limited. They are, how do you mute tabs in Chrome? Watch. You go up to the tab, you right click, you hit mute site. Aim Slayer, thank you so much for following, joining the guild. I'm gonna light a lamp for you in chat. Appreciate it. All right, so event shop. Uh, make sure you try and grab as much as you can out of these shops before the current event is over. 
I'll get to it eventually. These little tag things, you're like wondering what they are. They are just cutscenes. So if you don't speak Japanese, it's not the end of the world. You'll probably be watching these cutscenes on YouTube anyways for the translation. Um, but they're so cheap, I like to just buy them every time anyways, just for that feeling of completion. Okay, we're moving on. Hazuki Seal Shop. So you're going to be getting these um, Hazuki Shield... Is it Hazuki? I mean... Yeah, Hazuki Shield uh, Seals as you play the game. They're pretty freaking rare. Um, these tokens allow you to add merges to your current cards without having duplicates of the card. Counts is basically a free duplicate for any character. Um, you are not going to be dealing with this shop for quite some time, typically. Sort of an end game shop. Uh, similar to that, this is the memory token shop. When you get too many duplicates of a card, so you've gotten six or more of a card, um, you can crunch it up into one of these three currencies based on whether it's rare, super rare, or super secret rare, whatever it stands for. Um, and so these three tabs are the different levels. So this first one is the rare tokens, second is super rares, and third is super secret rares. Um, so typically you're going to be buying the Azuki duplicates from here as well, um, but there are a couple extra things you can buy like training tickets. Again, you're not going to be using this for a while. Um, the sixth shop is the clothes shop. Typically, these are bought with tokens that you get from buying real life purchases or spending real money. Um, so sadly, you won't be seeing this for a while, but you can get some super cute, unique outfits for your girls if you do happen to be able to unlock them. Uh, once again, Check out that Discord link anytime a new clothes shop comes out and see if there's a way that you can get them in-game. These uh, workout clothes you could get in-game from an event, so that may happen again in the future. And then last but not least, this recycle shop is pretty new. It sort of lets you turn weaker items plus some money into stronger versions of the items. Um, I haven't used it much yet. It seems pretty, pretty non-essential at the moment, um, but I'm sure we'll we'll start seeing this turn into something more useful later. Okay, so that's all the shops. Uh, the only ones you really care about are the money shop and the event shop for quite some time. And it looks like a little shopping cart on the left. Okay, the last one is the menu here. There is a lot to process here. Um, I highly recommend if you are going to be playing this game to go on Memrise.com I'm going to put that link in Yeah, yeah, we'll cover it. Alright, good call. So, if you want to buy some paid jewels, you can use this big yellow button. And uh, spend some real money currency to get some paid jewels. Now, I haven't done that myself. I'm not going to go over that here. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping you can use like Google survey money or something for it. So that'd be nice. I'll get some paid jewels eventually. Um, oh, okay. I assume the magnifying glass is searching for items in the shop, but as Cho has pointed out, um, it actually tells you this top line here is your free jewels, the second line here is your paid jewels, and the bottom line is your total jewels. So if you want to check how many paid jewels you've got left for these premium items, that is where you can do it. Okay, so back to the menu. Um, Memorize.com, take a katakana course on there. There's like, what, 40 Japanese letters in katakana? And any word you see in katakana, which most of the words on this screen right here are, are going to be English words that you can sound out in Japanese. So if you've taken a katakana course, you can read this and it says itemu, alubum, home units, you know, options. So just learning katakana is going to get you through most of this game, honestly. And it's you can probably knock it out in about two weeks, I would say, doing about 10 minutes a day. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to crank everything down a little bit here for the stream. Okay, so menu. So this first one here is your item list. 
Um, this is your current held items. Oh, these are different categories of items. So this is like items used in the produce mode, which we'll go over. This is your training tickets. This is your Hazuki seals. And this is your gotcha ticket. So I don't think I ever use this menu unless you like really want to check what your items are. Because anytime you're in a place where you need to use items, it'll list them there. Uh, second one is album. This is where you can go through all of the cutscenes for different events. Um, so you can not watch any cutscenes that you haven't seen. Uh, this picnic basket is the latest event, so that's that cutscene we skipped through earlier. You can rewatch it here. If you want to see cutscenes that you haven't, um, that you've missed previously, there is this little silver key item you can get from different events that will unlock it for you. Um, there are event cutscenes and special cutscenes. So this is the like uh, cutscene from when the first live came out. Next one here is home unit. This is one of the most important menus you'll ever use. It allows you to choose who you have on your home screen. So there's two different modes you can use. You can use the card art, which we don't have any cards yet because we haven't rolled anything. But for example, if we switch it just to like the default card art here, that's kind of creepy. <laughs> She's just frozen there. Um, but as you get like really cool cards, you can switch their card arts here. Or the second one is an animated character. You can click on the character. To switch it to your best character, if you don't choose Chiyuki here, you're probably playing the game wrong. Um, you can choose their clothes if you've unlocked any clothes. You can switch between their normal outfit and their event outfit. You can change how close they are with the latest update, so you can make it a little bit creepy. And then this button here lets you choose the background. So those are those backgrounds you could buy from the event. So let's... Let's make... No, it's too close. I can't handle it. Alright, so let's put Chiyuki in her outfit out in the middle of a park here. Okay, so that's home unit. And like I said, um, there's also the option to just do different cards. And you can have up to five of them here. Switch them like between their, their different modes here. And then when you come back here into your home menu, this little button will switch between all of them. But we don't have any cool cards yet, so we'll use the animated Chiyuki here. Okay, next one here. If you speak Katakana, it says four coma. And if you know what a four coma is, then you're good to go. If you don't know what a four coma is, you just click the menu. It's all the different little uh, manga cuts that you can read through. They're all pretty cute. They're all in Japanese. Follow the English Shiny Colors Twitter and they translate all of them. Four whole comas. Food coma, yes. Okay, fifth one is information. Uh, you're not going to need this. It's just like the terms of use and stuff. The sixth one we've already clicked on. It is options. There are your sound options. These are some different options for when you are going through the produce mode. Um, so it's things like, do you want tips? Well, let's go through each of them. So the first one is, are you allowed to touch your idol? Are you allowed to click on your idols during production? Now, the reason you might want to turn this off is if you're like me and you're, you're clicking back and forth like during a stream or something and you accidentally touch on your idols before you've, you've hit a certain bonds level with them, you'll actually lose some stats during the run. You'll lose tension. So you may want to turn that off, um, but having it on does allow you to tap them once you've hit level 3 bond or higher. Um, they'll be happy and it I don't think it increases any stats during the run, um, but there is like a secret hidden mission to do that for like 30 different weeks in a row. Um, yeah, but, but no, no inappropriate touching. If you are on the mobile app, I don't think you can even do this. Like I think they removed the feature because they do say some... Uh, pretty interesting things if you want to go watch a YouTube translation of the touching effects. Uh, the second one here is tips from Hazuki. I like to turn it off because she just kind of pops up, but it's good when you're first starting out for her to like pop them and be like, hey, you're out of stamina, you should rest today. Um, the next one is, I think, whether or not you want for the support events, 
whether you or not you want it to skip through them. I'm not sure. I'm actually not sure what this one is. Um, but test that out. Check out the Discord. They've got translations from us things. Let's see. Do we have the... I brought a lot of links. I did not bring the, the Discord general guide link. Here we go. Let's find it. Noah, welcome back to the stream. Thank you so much for the follow. I'm gonna light a lamp for it. I'm gonna cut all this out in the in the YouTube, but appreciate it. All right, so um, I see. So whether or not you're allowed to skip events that you haven't read before, um, so feel free to leave this on. And then um, this one right here is whether or not you want a confirmation dialogue for when you rest. Because uh, resting will sort of skip the week you're doing to recover stamina. So uh, when you're just starting out, probably a good thing so that like when you're clicking through menus, you click on the little coffee mug and you're like, well, wait a sec, did I want to do that? Leaves that confirmation menu up. And then um, this last one here is um, whether, or want, whether or not something for lives. See if I can read the katakana, I can tell it's talked about. Um, the live auditions or something. It's something about going back to the main screen here. Um, third option allows you to tweet the current idol you've got. Let's you choose an idol to tweet about. Click the little Twitter button. You gotta link your Twitter and everything. You guys can figure that out if you really need to be tweeting. Okay, so there's the options menu. We're making our way through. Last few ones. Okay, so this one's new, this event. And it allows you to make a, a cool little producer card for your uh, for your Twitter or something, or just to share on Instagram. Um, I don't know all the options here. I think you can choose like different titles you've unlocked. You can add a comment. You can change your name here, which is pretty new. You used to have to change your name through Enzo. And then it also allows you to choose like uh, which card you want to display here. And then I think that's it. Oh, I see. Once you toggle on or off, so if you happen to uh, not have any fans at all for Hiori, you can turn that fan count off and not be embarrassed. So, non-essential things for playing the game. We're going to skip through it. Here's a help menu. Doesn't help too much if you don't speak Japanese, because um, I think these are all image helps. So you can't right-click translate them. Feels real bad. So if you do need help, check out that Discord link once again. In the YouTube, it will be at the bottom of the screen. Frequently asked questions. Again, not something you're going to need. Oh god, it opened up a new tab. And then back to the title. Okay, so that's, that's everything on the left here. We're working our way through it. So here is your name. Here's your current money. Here's your current jewels. Uh, every time your jewels hits 3k, you are a new player, I recommend rolling on a gacha. We'll get into that soon. But I would recommend rolling on gachas until you have enough units that you feel like you don't need to roll anymore. And that's going to be a while. Um, we do get teasers for what the next character, what the next gacha is going to be. If it's really absolutely one of your favorites, you could save up as a new player. My wife's doing it because we know that the next event has Hiori in it, and that's her favorite. But most of the time, just keep rolling uh, until you run out. This little icon here, uh, you're going to see, is just for new accounts. It's 10 different new account missions. Um, you're going to knock these out just as you play the game. You don't have to worry about doing anything special to get them. Uh, so don't worry about them for now. If you really want a translation for them, I'm sure there is one somewhere. Um, I think the most important one is just start playing the... Uh, fest mode, which we will do first thing here and get our asses handed to us because we have no units yet. Um, but just playing the fest mode once does give you a 10 pull, which is really nice. Uh, like I said, this gives you back to the Enza. This just lets you full screen your idol um, for your screenshots or whatever you need. 
There's a list of events in the bottom left here. It's not a big deal. The only one that is a big deal is this very last one that's always going to be in the end. And this is your like uh, recruit a friend link. You can click right here to copy your URL. Um, there is a nice guide in the Discord for how you can recruit yourself, and that'll give you some free idols. Okay, now, all these options on the left. The shop is important. Getting your presents every day is important. You can usually ignore the mail. The menu is really not a big deal unless you want to change your home unit and your volume. Um, but these ones on the bottom, you're going to be using all the freaking time. So the very first one, this little uh, duck looking thing, once again, go to Memorize.com, practice your katakana, and you can read all of these except for this one right here. So this says, gotcha. So this will allow you to roll in your gotcha. So this very first one here, oh, there's so many gotchas. Swan, thank you, it's not a bird. Okay, we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up. So this very bottom one here is uh, your tickets. So anytime that you get a ticket from a different... You're going to go into the gotcha menu here at the very bottom, list all your different tickets. Big pink button uses it. Uh, the button right next to it will actually show you the rates. So as you can see from this ticket, it is guaranteed you just get an SR support card. So. We may as well pull this real quick, just to see who we've got. Audition starts. Shiny colors. We're getting Chiyoko. Um, the one thing is, sometimes you may not know who is actually the featured unit on the card. It's not a big deal once you get through the fest, because the, uh, the zoomed in face here is going to be the girl that's featured. But you can also look on the card and um, start memorizing these right here. This is going to be the character's name. Um, it's their last name followed by their first name, as is tradition in Japan. So you'll kind of eventually start learning to memorize these. Uh, Maguru is the easiest. She writes her name in hiragana, so it looks pretty different. It's not blocky Chinese letters. But you'll figure out what your favorite girl's name is pretty fast. This is Chiyoko. Uh, you can click on the card in here and get a breakdown of it. There are three different stats in shiny colors. It's going to be vocal, dance, and visual. Um, the nice thing is a lot of these are actually in English, so you can see all of the pink skills are vocal. So this card is pretty vocal focused, as you can see. Every single skill is vocal based. Um, if you just scroll down here, you can also see support cards do have different stats on them. I would not worry about these at the beginning. There are four different tabs here. Um, the second tab is going to be much harder for you to read without going to the wiki. Let's pull up the wiki now. And by pull up the wiki, I mean I'm linking it in the chat. Um, this is the English wiki. It is a godsend. You can go to card list right here. You can look for the card we just pulled. They're sorted by produce cards and then support cards. You don't know what that is yet. We'll get into it. But you just scroll till you find the card you got. Click on this name right here. Shout out, huge shout out to everybody in the Shiny Colors Discord. They've been doing a ton of work on this stuff. Um, but this will sort of give you the skills that we saw on the first tab and then uh, different support skills on the second tab. Um, there's not a good reference for what these support skills are yet, but I'm sure that will be added soon. Maybe there is. Maybe there's a skill list. But uh, anyways, yeah, so wiki is in progress. Please feel free to join the Discord and help out with the wiki. It would mean a lot. Uh, third tab here is just a list of different cutscenes that you can see on the card. We haven't unlocked any yet because we've never used the card. And last is Chiyoko's profile and her information. If you've learned hiragana, another thing I would recommend learning, because it's, again, pretty fast. It's just sounding things out. You can see it's Chiyoko here. She's 17. You are not allowed to loot this lolly. You can tweet about it if you want to. Uh, this golden button means one more time. So if you have more than one of this ticket, you can click this button instead of having to go all the way back to the menu. 
uh, but we do not, so we hit the big OK button. We're OK with getting Gioco. We're going to keep going up. This one right here, um, if you see the three Illumination Stars girls and scrolling along the top, it's like just a bunch of different random ones. This is the default banner that is always up and you should probably never pull. Because all this banner has on it is uh, any card that have been added to the regular pull. If we keep going, uh, you're going to see a bunch of these pop up all the time that only have like one option here. If you see step one, step two, step three, that means this is a step up banner. It costs real money. I'm not going to cover it. Uh, you can waste your money on these if you want to. We're going to keep going up. Okay, so most of the time there's not like three things at the very top here. If you're a new player, there probably will be. Uh, but this banner right here is typically the one on the top. This is the current featured banner. Uh, you can tell because it has the two cards on it that we saw at the start of the game. Um, this first option here is a special once per day. It's highlighted in gold and it requires real money to play. Uh, so you can pull pull once per day for I think it's 90 cents is, a, is what it translates to about. Um, but basically it's cheaper to pull once per day. They want you to always spend a little bit of real money every single day. And then, uh, then we get into the two different options for free jewels. There's the one pull for 300. I never do this. If you're impulsive, you may want to. And then there's the 10 pull for 3,000 jewels. And the nice thing about the 10 pull is it guarantees that the very last card is at least SR or higher. Um, so try to always do 10 pulls if you can. These buttons at the bottom, I think the only one that I care about typically is this one right here, the second to last one, sort of gives you the rates on everything. So SSRs are 2% uh, on the left is produce or 3% for support. Again, if you know Katakana, it says support idle and produce idle literally in English as long as you can sound it out, learn that Katakana, you'll breeze through this game. Um, and then the different rates for every single card. So this Rinze right here is the 1%. It's featured. Every other SSR produce is 0.04%. And then I think this button right here, yeah, just sort of describes the gotcha. Okay, so we're going up. So these are all the newbie things. Um, so this right here is the first anniversary event going on right now. If you are watching this live or you're watching it right as it gets uploaded to YouTube. As of right now, we are counting down to the first anniversary, which hits on April 11th here. So every single day you get a free 10 pull. So you should make your account now and start free 10 pulling. So we're gonna do that real quick actually. I think before I describe anything else. Uh, no, I'll describe this one real quick. So this one is like a beginner beginner gotcha. It's a beginner step up. Uh, you're only going to have this for, I think, like the first 72 hours of your account or something. It does require paying money, but it is actually a pretty good step up gotcha if you want to pay real money. Okay, so we're going to do the free temple just because if we happen to get some SSRs on this pull, that means when we re-roll our pulls for our main account, we can ignore those SSRs. So let's see how good our very first 10 pull is. So when you go into an audition, two different things can happen. Um, the curtains can change color or they don't. If they don't change color, it means you're either getting just a regular rare produce unit or a support card. If the curtains change gold or they change rainbow, it means you're getting a better than regular produce card. So here we go. So th these are gold curtains, which means we're getting an SR produce card right off the bat. And it's Chiyuki, and she's got watermelon. All of our favorite things in one place. I'm feeling good about this account. Alright, so. Produce cards and support cards are two different things. Produce cards are the actual idols that you will create. Whereas a support card right here, you can tell by the S or the P in the top left. Um, support cards are the blue S. Produce cards are the pink P. Um, support cards are sort of like, I mean, they're they're supporting units, um, and they're typically just like a picture of the idol. They're not an actual moving idol, and uh, they are linked to different events. They've got different skills. Yeah, supports are kind of like equipment, exactly. 
Um, so actually in this game, I would say starting out, supports are more important than produce cards, but produce cards are more rare. So when you're re-rolling, you kind of want an even amount of both. All right, so long ass loading screen, rainbow, rainbow uh, curtains there. So we are getting an SSR produce card right off the bat for our free pull. So now we know when we go to reroll, we don't necessarily need another Uika SSR produce card. Um, if you see this right here and you know Katakana, you read this top and you're like, oh shit, it says error, which means there is an error. You read Katakana and this says skip and this says play again. It's fine. We'll skip the cutscene for now. You'll get this a lot during cutscenes for whatever reason they haven't fixed it. It's not a big deal. Just skip it. You can watch the cutscene some other time. That was actually the end of the cutscene and we got the error anyways. Okay, more support cards. So pulling a, an SSR off of the free 10 pull of the day is kind of a big deal. Um, like we saw earlier, it's 2% for a produce SSR and 3% for a support SSR. Um, so about 5%, so 50-ish percent on a full 10 pull that you'll get an SSR. There's our swimsuit Kogane. So we're getting a lot of good produce cards and not really a lot of support cards. So since we got to produce SSR right off the bat, I would say for our rerolls, we want to prioritize SSR supports. So again, you can see all of our... So anything that's gray here is just a rare card, and it's pretty worthless. You may use them as you're starting out, but you're going to try and, try and wean your way off of them as soon as possible. And then all of our cards that had a higher than normal rarity are produced cards. Um, so that means... So when you do a run, you're going to be using one produce card and five support cards. And you can use the five support cards for every single produce card that you have. So getting five good support cards off the bat is, I would say, um, a higher priority than getting a bunch of really good produce cards. Maybe get one or two of those. Um, the only exception is, of course, you cannot use a support card of a girl you're using for a produce card. So if I were to create go through a run with this produce card right here for Chiyuki, I cannot also use her support card at the same time. Okay, so we can't do anything except say okay here. Uh, this message is saying we've already pulled today, you gotta have to wait until midnight Japan time to pull again. So now we get into this very top one here, is actually the new account reroll. One of the many reasons why Idolmaster Shiny Colors is the best gacha game in the world. We'll get into the other reason later, but it comes with a free reroll fil feature built in. So we're just going to hit this button and start our first roll. And we are looking for support SSRs here. I highly recommend if you're starting out and you didn't get any SSRs on that um, anniversary pull, try and get one produce SSR and one support SSR off the bat. Now, which produce and which support SSR you want to go for, um, that is typically waifu decided. So we got one more link for chat. This is a slideshow created by the one and only Maddie from the Shiny Colors Discord. And it is going to break down all the waifus for you so you can pick your favorite. If it's not Chiyuki, I forgive you, but you're wrong. Um, I think the only thing it doesn't cover, if you are playing this game after April 1st, we are getting three more girls. How do I look at what I have? So that'll be the next menu item after rolling the gacha. But that is important. Absolutely. It's, it's probably the most used menu item. Okay, so this roll did not have any SSRs in it. Feels bad. So, like I said, this gold option is roll again. So if you have like a bunch of tickets you're going through, you're going to be using this roll again. Or if you're spending all your jewels, you're going to be rolling again. But most importantly, if you are on the beginner banner, this allows you to re-roll your first 10 pulls and scrap all of these. If I go to click OK here, it's going to say, well, wait a second, are you sure, are you, sure you don't want to re-roll anymore? 
and you hit the blue button to be like, uh, yeah, cancel, let's, let's re-roll because we didn't get any SSRs here. Now, the reason you want to re-roll on a browser is because, actually, I did not copy the link, it's fine. Let's go through until we, until we see some more cutscenes real quick. Uh, but you can actually re-roll a lot faster on a browser without having to constantly spam click through all this every time. Good thing we went through a bunch of rares there. Okay, so reroll hell time. Getting all the rares. Oof, this is almost as bad as it can get. There's one SR support. There's another SR support. And that's the full roll. Alright, so bad stuff. Okay, so what you can do on your browser is actually copy this URL right here, which is the results page. And when you go to reroll, after it loads, you actually just skip to the results page. You just paste that link in and go to your results. And it gives you what you rerolled here. So we're gonna we're gonna go till we see at least one more SSR cut so you guys can fall in love with at least one more waifu. And then we're gonna start skipping to the uh, result. There's Snow Day Kaho, that's some good shit. Okay, so if you see the rainbow explosion at the end, that means it is an SSR support. It is Chiyuki. That feels pretty good. We do want SSR support since we already have a produce SSR. Um, but again, I highly recommend rerolling until you have at least two SSRs. Um, if they're both support and both produce, then feel free to keep it if you really love the girls. Um, but I would say... Yeah, I know, I know. I hate it. I, I love Chiyuki, but this card really isn't that good. Uh, once again, you can click on the cards to see sort of what they are. This is a vocal card. It's not great. All these green things are like a health recovery, which you typically don't use too much. Um, oh, I hear you, Cho. The more Alstro we get in top-ranking teams, the better. Chiyuki is 23. You are allowed to loot her. She even loots herself for you. Uh, this card, you can see, definitely has a pretty heavy vocal focus just by the stat breakdown. Um, and then if we go to Kaho, let's find a non-vocal card just for an example here. Everybody's vocal. Alright, the, the rares are kind of weird. They kind of have a little bit of everything. So blue is dance, yellow is visual. Those are the three main stats. This Hiyori, I think, is visual, or is she vocal as well? She's dance. Okay. So this card, you can see, is a dance-focused card. But once again, we don't have two SSRs. You can reroll infinitely. Some people reroll for like the week. This is a tutorial count. We are not going to do that. We're going to stop probably as soon as we get two SSRs. This is as bad as it can get. So like I said, if you do a 10 draw, the last card is guaranteed SR or higher. So it's, it's full rares and then an SR. Feels bad. I want to see one more SSR cut. We're going to go until we see the, uh, the drapes here turn rainbow. You can click through pretty fast now at least. Maybe. Maybe not. If it's a new card it doesn't let you skip through it very fast. There's that Sakuya. Alright, man, we're not even getting any SSRs at all. We've gotten one so far. But we're going to get through these rerolls real quick. We're going to see one more cutscene. And then we will start using the URL trick to get through real fast. There's a Natsuha. No SSRs, no produces even. And this is what you're doing for your first day. Nah, I'm just I just want to see the cutscene. Actually, you know what? If we get a produce SSR, we'll see the cutscene during the while we use it. So let's start skipping ahead. We're gonna go until we get two SSRs, just to sort of give you an idea of what you want to work with here. So I highly recommend rerolling on a browser. Ooh, there's an SSR Tenka. I do not have this on my main account. I'm a little jealous. 
but it's only one SSR, so she goes in the trash. Feels bad. Um, I would say go for two or more SSR. You're going to get plenty of SRs as you play. Now, having SRs can actually be better than having SSRs. Um, the SRs can actually be stronger than SSRs, it's just SSRs are so rare. You you should definitely take advantage of the fact that you have rerolls. Alright, we got the Chiyuki again, we got Maguru. Uh, this is a pretty decent roll. I'm going to keep it just to, to go forward. Um, if you like Maguru or you like Chiyuki, you know, keep a roll like this. If you don't, if there are other girls you prefer, maybe roll until you've got two SSRs that you like. So this time we're hitting OK, we're hitting OK, okay to confirm. We do have a good Maguru, so boom. So this beginner gotcha is no longer on our list. You can never re-roll again. Feels bad. Okay, so... The next and probably the most frequently used uh, menu option. Actually, we'll grab our present real quick here. Some Hazuki seals. Not even seals, some Hazuki tokens. Is going to be uh, this little microphone. And if you read katakana, it says idol right here. And this is your idol list. So, uh, this top left, uh, I almost never used because it's going to be the exact same thing as just clicking produce here. The top right, well, I'll show you. If you click top left, it just gives you uh, your unit teams uh, for going into produce mode. So you can set them up here, but we'll set it up in the produce mode. Uh, top right, I use all the time. It is just your list of idols. So there are five tabs here. The first one is going to be your FES idols. Um, we'll explain those in just a little bit here. The second tab is all the produced cards you've gotten. So you should have almost every single character as a rare card, and then maybe even some extra rare cards. And then um, the two SSRs we pulled, the two SRs we pulled. So this is where you can go to look at all your produced cards. Third tab is all your support cards. Um, so we only have one SSR and three SRs. So we're gonna have to go into our produce mode with a not quite SR or higher team. Feels a little bad, but we're starting out. That's okay. The third tab is your duplicate produce cards. And the, or sorry, fourth tab is duplicate produce cards. Fifth tab is duplicate support cards. Um, before you do anything with your duplicates here, you should always go to this bottom right option. Uh, it sort of means special training. And this is where you have produced cards and support cards. You can use them to merge. So we have two of this mono here. It's only going to list cards that you have duplicates of. Um, if you just hit the plus button or even the, the double arrows over, we pulled an extra mono. Evolution. I love it. All right, so let's evolve some cards. Um, so. Remember, from our pulls, we got an extra mono here. You start with one of the rare monos. So we're going to merge it. It gives it this little star on the card, you can see, and it unlocks some skills. Uh, so typically, cards are useful off the bat with their beginner skills. They are then getting a pretty strong skill when you get two more of the cards. So you have three copies total and you get the two stars. Uh, that'll typically unlock a golden skill on the card. It doesn't really for these rares because they're just so common. Um, and then of course when you get five copies of the cards, get it to four star, that's the cap. That's when they become the most useful and you unlock the strongest skills on the card. So I'm just going to go through here real quick, get some stars on all of our dupes. They are all rare cards, but I'm going to max them out just to max them out. Ooh, we even got a training ticket for upgrading some cards from the beginner missions. Cool. If we back out, we should see that in our present. Oh, the training missions don't even put it in the presents. They just put it in our bags. Okay, so our list of all idols here, unlocking the potential or evolving cards here. And then this bottom left one here is the training menu. If you speak katakana, it says training. 
So support cards can be leveled up. Produce cards cannot. So a produce card that you get, if you get five copies of it, get it to that four star, that's as strong as it's ever going to get. It's pretty much as strong as it's ever going to get, even when you just get one copy of it. That's why produce cards are nice. Support cards are going to be sort of your feeling of progression in the game. Um, because all those training tickets we've been seeing in different shops uh, do allow us to level up support cards. So if I go in here, um, we've got bronze training tickets, gold training tickets, silver training tickets. It's kind of weird they're actually in a different order. I guess because I have no silver training tickets. Normally it's bronze, silver, gold. Um, but they kind of work how you'd expect. Bronze only give 50 XP. As you can see, we would get from level 1 to level 2 here. Whereas a gold gives like 500 or something. It would get us straight to level 15. Um, if you get any SSR supports, I would highly recommend using a couple gold tickets on them. Maybe we'll use three, just get to 30 here. Um, but try and get a good group of your cards up to begin with. Um, just with a few training tickets you have. It's not a big deal, you'll get more training tickets. Um, level up a few of your cards just to make your first few runs pretty easy here. So we'll get our SRs up and our SSR. I'm going to leave my rares at level 1 because we should be replacing them soon. Okay, so we've gotten our SSR to 30, some SRs to 17, one SR to 4. Um, it doesn't really matter as you're starting out. Just get all of them up a little bit. Um, you're going to see this pop-up happen quite a bit. If you read Katakana, the bottom right says Mission He. He sort of just means um, to go in that direction, or you can hit OK. So if you hit OK, this will close. If you hit Mission in the bottom here, it brings you to your mission list, uh, which is this third button right here. So we've got Gotcha, we've got Idols, we've got Mission List. So if you go to your mission list, this first one here, you read the Katakana, it says Daily Missions. Uh, so one of your missions every single day you should be trying to do is use one of those training tickets on a support idol. Trust me, you'll never run out of support idols to use training tickets on. Gives you 100 jewels. Um, the other two are play fast once, play fast twice, and complete all of the daily missions. So we will do fast next to sort of show that off. Uh, the second tab here is your weekly missions. It is basically play fast 15 times during the week. Uh, win it once and then produce three idols and then you've got uh, normal missions these ones have no time limit it's sort of things like uh, you know get Maguru a hundred million fans and stuff um, do jobs etc then you've got special missions which are even more unique it's like true ending cards don't worry about these two for, for quite some time and then the last one is something you should care about this is the event mission so go to the Shiny Colors Discord if you want a description of the event missions. If you are starting today and want to knock these out, um, this event is all about creating idols in the um, produce mode. If you create a single idol during the event, you will get this card of Kaho. So you should absolutely create an idol. Uh, follow along on the guide, we'll be doing that pretty soon here. And then it's other things like get Tenka to Season 4 and Win Wing with her. Uh, get Rinze to Season 4 and Win Wing with her. Those are the two girls featured on the banner. That's why they have missions. Um, and then things like get any Illumination Stars girl, get any Antigua girl, get any Hokago Climax girl, and get any um, Alstromeria girl up to B. -ray. So um, use that, uh, what is it, slideshow that I linked from Maddie to figure out which girls are in which teams. So you can get one of each. But we'll be we'll be covering that pretty soon here. Uh, the fourth one here is jobs. So this one's a little bit confusing. If you have real money jewels, you can unlock some more slots. But basically, this is your AFK mode. Uh, you click on a job slot. You choose one of the jobs, either three hour, six hour, or twelve hour. If you are starting out, twelve hour is probably the way to go. Um, you can see there's three different things here. The three hour gives you the most XP. The six hour is useless because it gives you the most fans and nobody cares about fan count. Except for the event running right now, but we'll ignore that. And uh, the third one gives you the most items. And if you're just starting out, you really want items because you want notebooks. 
Okay, so we're going to choose that 12 hour mission and then it asks you to choose five idols to send into this mission. Now send all the idols that you want to level up into the mission. That's the, that's the only choice is basically who you're going to level up here. Um, let's do the Maguru because we've got one star on her. And now it sounds scary. You're sending them away on a mission. It doesn't get rid of them at all. It, it just starts leveling them. Um, so don't worry about, ooh, sorry, I was trying to like go back. Uh, don't worry about sending all your best idols out on these missions. It will level them. You will still be able to use them in all of the other modes. So we're going to hit the confirm button here. Um, these muffins just sort of boost the amount of XP that you get from the mission. We're going to confirm here. Uh, this is cancel. This is like convert items into muffins. I'll go over that in the next page. So we're going to just confirm send all our girls on a job definitely check out the job mode every time you get on and now it gives you a countdown 11 hours 59 minutes until we can uh, confirm get a whole bunch of items and send out a new job um, so how you get muffins is you turn your stamina into muffins do not do this right off the bat we're going to be producing a card um, but if you are are leaving for the day feel free to come in here turn the rest of your stamina into muffins if you don't feel like playing for the day turn your stamina into muffins when you log in and check in real quick yep i feel you pokemans just keep re-rolling if you really like the produce cards or the support cards you can keep them there's nothing wrong with starting out with two ssr produces or two ssr supports um, if you start out with no good supports at all, it is going to be quite a bit harder to begin with, but you'll, you'll pull them eventually. You can use SR supports while you wait. Okay, so we've covered these four bottom ones here. Now the next two are the actual play modes. These are what you're going to be doing, you know, to actually enjoy the game. Uh, this first one here, the produce mode, is the hour-long mode or so. Uh, we're going to go through it pretty fast, hopefully, because I do have to go to work eventually, but we'll stay a little bit longer today for this tutorial. Um, and then the right mode is sort of the PvP mode. The right mode is very quick, very fast, and you can knock it out. Like I said, you, you have a daily mission to do this one twice. Uh, so this is the second reason why Idol Master Shiny Colors is the best gacha game ever. Is if you just want to get in, do your daily missions, you can knock it out in like 10 minutes. You train up in idle real quick with that training mode. Once again, go into idles, go into training here. This is your idle list. This is your idle uh, limit break evolution. These three are very important. So train in idle once for one daily mission, and then go into fast and play twice for the other daily mission. So we're in fast here, and everything's real confusing. Um, the things that you care about here is at the top, we see visual is first, dance is second, vocal is third. So that means for this entire festival season, it is a visual festival. And you sort of uh, want to be focusing on visual skills and the visual judge. Um, right now we haven't created any units, so I'm going to go in here and get my ass handed to me. I'm just going to kind of show you how festivals work. On the left here is our grade. We're currently level 1. Uh, this little arrow sort of indicates at the end of the season with our current score what's going to happen to our grade. Is it going to go down? Is it going to stay the same, which it currently will because you can't go below one? Or is it going to go up? Um, this second point here, I'll get into that maybe more when we, when we go further. Um, there's three buttons at the bottom here. This left one is just sort of an example of if you end the season... At level 1 grade, you get some money. If you end at level 2, you get a Hazuki seal and some gems. And then as you can see, if you're a god and you end at grade level 7, you get 20 Hazuki seals and you get an SSR ticket. That has a 15% chance of an SSR instead of the normal 5%. So it's actually not that much better than even hitting level 4, but it's something and the Hazuki seals are a big deal. Okay, the second button down here just takes you to the money shop because you make money by playing this fest mode. And the third button here allows you to change your team. So you can store 10 teams at once if you want to. 
This is our current team. It's the default team that we get. It's just Mono, Hiyori, Meguru, and then it starts going into the Lantica girl. Um, so if you want to, you can go in here and choose who you want to use. It doesn't matter at all because all of the starting units have the exact same stats and they're all absolutely terrible and it feels real bad. Um, let's see, who do I like? Let's do Natsuha and maybe Rinze. Okay, so all of these units... Oop, I hit back too much. Did it not save for some reason? How strange. That was weird. Okay, alright, we're putting Chiyuki in the middle. Hell yeah, Pokemans. Nice job pulling the one produce SSR to support SSRs. Alright, so this is the fast mode. We're going to play it twice real quick to knock out the daily mission. Well, we'll play it once. We'll play it once. I'm just going to show you what happened. Okay, so you click this big button here. Um, these five yellow lines are sort of your stamina for fast. It recovers like once every half hour, you get one point back. And that's just how many times you can play. Um, I typically don't even play that much. Um, but if you're really struggling to like get your grade up, you may want to play the grade mode a lot. So you've got two options here. One is rehearsal. This one, um, you're going to be playing against AI bots. It's typically for grinding out money. There are some events where you have to do rehearsal mode. Um, we're going to go ahead. Well, we'll do rehearsal. The second one here is grade mode. You're going to be playing against a bunch of opponents who are in your current grade. It's actual other players' teams. Uh, so if I go into grade fast here and I click on hard, I'm going to be playing against other people in grade one who have probably made better units than me. Um, so we're going to go into rehearsal here. We're going to click on easy and we're probably going to get stopped because all of these units are the default units with the lowest stats possible. Okay, so we get some cards here and this is the audition mode. Ooh, it even saved that I have times three. Um, so you can play on one time speed if you want. One time speed bugs the hell out of me. So there's a lot to soak in on this screen. Um, if you remember from the the first screen where we were sort of choosing who our team was going to be, visual was first, dance was second, vocal was third. Uh, you're always going to see vocal, dance, visual in this order top to bottom, but the judge numbers change here. And then um, you can see pretty easily here there's little 2 times stars and 1.5 times stars, so the visual judge is worth twice as many points if you can get stars from him. So how do I explain audition? Um, in order to win an audition, on the right here you can see all of our AI opponents. Here's us at the bottom and our star counts. Whoever has the most stars at the end of an audition wins. Uh, you can tie for first place and that's total, totally acceptable to do. Um, it only matters really what your score is. It doesn't really matter which of the AIs get second or third. But it just matters that you got third. Um, you can see on the right here, our mental stat is sort of our HP. We have 340. All of our opponents have like 800, and that's because we're terrible and haven't made any units yet. Um, if you pause, you can sort of see your mental and any, any passives that are currently running. If you click on a judge, you can see Right now this judge is taking zero damage out of their 18,000 health. And uh, these three options at the bottom here are your current appeals. So these are your attacks you can use on a judge. What you'll typically do is choose an appeal. It kind of describes the appeal here. All three of our appeals are dance right now. Um, and they're dance times one appeals, about as weak as it can possibly get. You're going to choose an appeal and you're going to choose a judge to hit with it. Um, so we could go for the visual judge here because they're worth the most stars. How you earn stars is uh, by doing 33% of a judge's health. So if we look here, they've got 18,000 health, so that's what, like 6,000, I think, damage exactly. If you can do 6,000 damage to this judge, you'll get some stars from it. Doing 6,000 damage to the, to the visual judge is going to be worth twice as much as doing 6,000 damage to the vocal judge. Um, if you get the very last hit on a judge and you hit their you know, 18,000 cap or whatever, you'll get some stars. And then of course if you did the most damage to a judge, that's going to be worth the most points from the judge. Um, you'll get a big chunk there. 
So because all of our appeals are dance, we are going to be doing more damage to the dance judge. Dance judge is second place, feels kind of bad hitting them, but we're not going to win this anyways. So I'm just going to choose a Chiyuki appeal here. I'm going to select the dance judge to try and hit him, and then this appeal bar is going to come up. Um, so this is sort of the, you know, the, the personal skill coming in here. Um, if you hit in the green bar here, it's going to be a normal hit. It's going to hit pretty weak. Hitting in the uh, yellow bar is not bad. It's going to be a good hit. And then if you can hit in the smaller white bar here, it's going to be a perfect hit and hit for the most. Um, depending on how good of a hit you do, if you hit perfect, you're going to be um, sort of shooting to the top on the right side here and hitting earlier in the turn than the opponents. We can actually see what all of our opponents are going to be hitting for here. Three of them are hitting normals and two of them are hitting goods. So if we hit a perfect, uh, we should go to the very first place and hit first. So we hit for 800. Our opponents are hitting for like 800 to 1000, which is actually less than I thought they would be hitting for. Um, so let me slow it down here real quick and hit this judge again. Now you can see, um, because we've lost some of our health on the right, you might have missed it because we were going so fast, but after everybody hits the judges, before like the, the baths come in, the judges do also get to hit back. The judges will drain your mental, and because we're missing some mental here, the bar's a little bit harder. Um, we've got a slightly shorter normal bar, a definitely shorter good bar, a very small perfect bar, and then the purple at the end is a bad bar. Um, so if you hit bad, you're, even, you're hitting for even worse than normal. You're always going to be like hitting last. Um, I recommend if you're trying to hit those perfects, try to go a little bit earlier on the perfect and later on the perfect just so that if you miss the perfect you hit into good territory rather than bad territory. Okay, like that. Okay, so there's an AI hitting, there's us hitting the dance judge, AIs are hitting, now judges are hitting back, they sort of choose uh, three people at a time to hit, and those people lose mental. Slow mo. I know it feels bad. I can't stand playing in one times, but it's it's pretty good when you're first starting off. Okay, so you can see this link appeal hit right here, or the the memory appeal charged up. So this is a special move. Um, this bar will slowly fill up as turns go by. Uh, you'll sort of get a feel for how fast it's going to fill up when you're playing in fest mode in the PvP mode. Um, where your bar starts off is going to be random. So sometimes you're going to start off with a pretty full bar and get this right away like we just did. We got turn 3, which I think is as fast as you can uh, without any special skill. And sometimes the bar is going to start completely empty and you're never even going to see this hit before the, the whole audition is over. Um, it is a Link appeal, so I should have brought Tenka and Amana to show this off. But because it says Link right here, any skill can say Link on them. Your memory appeals are always going to say Link on them. Um, a memory appeal hits all of the judges and it hits for as hard as your character's tension is, which we'll get into later. Don't worry about it too much, just know memory appeals are almost always pretty damn strong. And Link appeals um, require... You can see we've hit with Chiyuki and we've hit with Yori. It actually lists the characters in the bottom left here. It'll store up to the five last hits. If you're going for a Link appeal, and the other girls in this idol's team are in your little tray in the bottom left here. So, Chiyuki's in the Alstromeria team. If we had Tenka and Amana from Alstromeria, it's a three-person team um, in the bottom left here, then this would do some extra special effects for it being a Link appeal. Um, on the left here is the regular effect, on the right here is the Link appeal effect. So it hit for an extra visual 0.5 if we had the full link appeal going, but we don't. I'm going to show the memory appeal just to show it. When you do a memory appeal, you get that scrolling bar of bads and goods. It falls off eventually. I should have shown that, but um, that is the one time where you really do have a time limit uh, during an audition. If you don't click a good before the whole thing falls off, it is a bad hit. Okay, so we're going to keep playing here. Ooh, I hit a bad there. Enemies are using their memory appeals. They're getting stars. I'm going to slow it down once again so we can see sort of getting stars. But if you see on the right here, we've got zero stars. This idol's got 32 stars. This idol's got three stars. Feels bad. 
Um, we're so low on mental, our perfect bar is almost non-existent. At this point, I typically just go for a good hit, because it's risky to try and hit that perfect and risk a, a bad hit. So let's see. Alright, so this person hit last appeal, got six stars. That guy got top appeal. The other guy got a bonus at the end, that means they hit that 6,000 threshold to do a third of the judge's health. It's kind of hard. You'll figure it out as you play, but basically just aim to hit the judges as hard as you can. Hitting the first place judge is more important than hitting the third place judge, etc. Alright, so we got absolutely stomped. We got no stars at all. We got fifth place. We got one money token from it. And that's because we went in without ever making it idle. So how do we make our units stronger in this mode so that we can actually hit the judges pretty hard? And that's where the second game mode comes in. So as you can see, getting through that mode, if I hadn't explained it, we would have done that in a few minutes. And, uh, sorry, I'm like autopiloting through. So there's one of our daily missions we played once. If we play a second time, that's all of our daily missions done. It's train and idle, play the fast mode twice. Um, we're getting some random normal missions here. If you just if you see these light up, come in, grab the rewards. It's a training ticket. It's like you played fest for the first time ever on this account. Here's a training ticket. Cool. Okay, so the other mode, the reason why this game is so freaking, is a simulation game, not unlike Monster Rancher if you've played it, or some of the early Idol Master games, which I have not played, but I've heard they are also simulation games. We are going to go and choose an idol to fulfill all of her hopes and dreams, train her up, get her good at vocal, dancing, or visual, and, uh, and really give her some stats here. So we're going into this produce mode. It's the big pink one. Ooh, they're telling us about... I see, I see. Okay, so this is new. So there's actually going to be two different produce modes, so we're going to have to make a tutorial on the second one within a week or so here. Uh, but right now, the only option that has existed in the game for the last year is this wing mode. So you're going to come in here, you're going to choose wing. Then, once you've chosen that... Yeah, exactly. Most of the other Idol Master games are rhythm games. Supposedly, like, the very first ones were, uh, were simulation games like this as well. Okay, so you're going to come in here, and now what we're going to do is we're going to choose... We get one produce idol and five support idols. So if you click on the little square up here, it lets you choose your produce idol. So let's do Maguru. I like Maguru. Um, so if you click and hold here, you can actually look at the idol stats maybe. Yes, you got to click and hold and then release. It's a little weird. Um, so it looks like Maguru here is a vocal and a dance idol for us. She's got sort of a split between both of them. And then she's got a visual uncap at the end. So typical illumination stars trying to have every single stat um, but I think for now we'll focus on vocal and dance you can go in here to look at memory peel I really wouldn't worry about it at the start just just worry about getting some idols with some stats to begin with um, actually I'm gonna head back real quick into this fast mode so when we go to choose our unit uh, what you see here we can swap out the units, but importantly, there are five different roles for a unit to have. Um, the most obvious ones are the vocal, dance, and visual roles. So if you put a unit in the vocal role, they actually get their vocal stat boosted. Like, I think almost double here. Um, and so you sort of want, when you're starting out, to have probably a pretty even team. Uh, a little bit of every stat, so you're going to want to make an idol who's really good at dance to put in the dance slot. You're going to want a really good visual idol, really good vocal idol, just to sort of get a little bit of everything. Um, the center idol gets all of their stats boosted, all of their vocal, dance, and visual. Uh, so you can make a pretty even idol if you want. It's kind of hard to do in a fast mode. I typically sort of switch out my center. Yeah, so they start out with 50 and everything. I think they're getting an extra 10 boost just from having memory appeal level 1 or something. Um, but I, then they're also getting an extra 50. So it's it's doubling here. You're getting like an extra 0.5 on your center for every stat. Um, what I typically do for center, if you're starting out, since we know like today or this season is a visual season, is maybe make a center unit who's good at visual 
and just get sort of double up on the visual buffs. So you have a really strong visual and a visual center as well. And then still a dance, still a vocal. And then leader gets a buff to their mental, uh, which most people think isn't as important. If you're playing Alstromeria, mental's pretty important. You probably want a high mental card. But the other important thing about the leader is they get their passives more often. Don't worry about that just yet. Just know that leader's getting getting passives more often and getting a boost to mental. And your center, so your center their memory appeal is going to hit a lot stronger. That's going to be the memory appeal that you use. So if you are using, um, say, like the Illumination Stars, like Mono, Hiyori, and Muguru, yep, leaders get passives more often. Um, so if you have a really strong passive make sure it is on your leader not everybody else um, and then so your center gets their memory appeal so remember earlier i was saying like if i had a mana and tenka on the team then when i use chiyuki's memory appeal there it would use the link appeal so if you do have like hiori and mono and maguru on your team you want to make sure since you have that full unit on your team you want one of them to be the center so that you can use their link appeal um, if you're using like girls from every different team on your team sorry I'm using the word team too much uh, then it doesn't matter who your center is but at some point you are probably gonna want to make a team focused on one of the groups so like either one of the, the five unit groups uh, like the Hokago girls or Lantica or one of the three unit groups and make sure one of them is the center okay so we're going in to produce. We're choosing wing. We've got Maguru here. She was vocal and dance. Let's see what our supports were. Chiyuki, we remember, was vocal. So maybe we'll just work on a vocal card here, just for an example. So we're going to slot in Chiyuki here. We're getting some missions done for changing out our supports. Yeah, memory appeal is typically the most important for link appeals. But yeah, you can, uh, like we see here, going into the Maguru here. Like, even her basic skill here is a link appeal. Um, let's just slot in all of our SRs. We don't even know what they're good at, but we'll find out. Um, if you get a confirmation message there, it's just saying like, Hey, this idol is already in the team. Are you sure you want to swap it out? You can cancel or you can hit OK. Um, so the only difference between the guest slot and these four slots is as you saw in the auditions, we're going to be doing some auditions just like that PvP mode we did um, in our run here. The first four girls are going to be your backups for the auditions because there's only five girls in an audition. Your produce is one of them. Um, and the guest unit will not show up in your auditions. So we're going to choose like one of our rares as the guest unit here. And one of the good things you can do with the guest unit is like if you're kind of going for a vocal run and your guest unit has visual as their skill right here in the second slot then that's a good one to put in the guest slot typically you just want to put like your lowest level one in the guest slot um, something that's not relevant now but may become relevant as you play the game more you can click on the girls down here and change their outfits if you've unlocked them the way you unlock those is getting a completely four star five copies of any produced card so once we get the five copies of this maguru anytime we have her in support we can change to this outfit it's not a big deal. Um, I don't remember what these bottom ones are. So this one's like auto build me a team if I'm really bad and don't want to choose my idols myself. The second one is like list all of their passive. It's all going to be in Japanese. It's confusing. Doesn't matter. Choose your best supports for now. Choose one of your good produced units. We're just going to go in here. Okay. So this is your item selection. Um, check out the Discord for descriptions of all the items. The only item I'm going to tell you about is this notebook, and this notebook is a freaking godsend. Anytime you can buy more notebooks from events, uh, it's one of the reasons that we're doing the give me lots of items passive AFK job is to try and get more notebooks. You're going to start with 10. You're going to wish you had more. Uh, we're going to take a notebook on the run. Anytime you take an item on one of these produce runs, you do lose it permanently. So if you don't know what an item does, maybe don't use it until you've researched it. And while you're just starting out, maybe don't use too many items. Uh, the notebook item, what it does is during quick time events and during conversations, it's going to actually tell you what the results of your choices are going to do. Uh, so we'll see that in play pretty soon here. So we're coming in, 
selling you, hey, it's going to cost 30 stamina. Um, I find it pretty freaking hard to run out of stamina unless I'm really grinding through produce here. So don't worry about your stamina at all. Click the pink button, we're starting to produce mode. So, unless you learn Japanese, you're going to be skipping through a lot of these cutscenes. So, we're going to hit this times four. We're going to skip through the intro. It's like, hey, how do we meet Maguru? How do we convince her to be an idol, etc. We get some beginner rewards just for starting to produce mode. Uh, right now, there's sort of an event going on, so we get these little Kachans showing up. Okay, while you're in produce mode, uh, you don't actually need to worry about most of these buttons on the left and the right. This one will take you back to the home menu. You can do that at any time. It does not kill your produce run. And then when you go back to produce, you've got some options here. You can cancel. You can hit this big blue scary button, which you should not do, which kills the run. Or you can hit the pink button to go right back to your run. And, ooh, do we get the whole cutscene again? We sure do. Okay, and we're back in our run. Uh, this one is your options, just like on the home menu. The top left just sort of lets you look at your units in case you need to like remember what some of them do for their passives here. The second one does allow you to change your outfit for the idol. And the third one is if you have any items that are like one time use during a run, like there's some items that recover your stamina, lets you use them here. So I almost never use these side buttons. So what is important about this screen? So the most important thing about this screen is this big eight here. This means you have eight turns until the current season ends. You can see the season number just next to the eight here. We're in season one. That's a little bit more obvious, but sometimes you'll lose track of it. So we have eight turns until the season ends. And this red number right here, this little kanji means people, you need 999 fans in order to make it to the next season. And that is important because every single week you have in this game you can use to get more stats. If you don't make it to the next season, the run ends and you can't get any more stats. So we want to make sure before the season ends we get 999 fans so that we can unlock the next season and get another 8 week weeks to train. Now there are four seasons at the beginning. If you're just starting out, as soon as you get to season four, you can stop worrying about the fan count. You really don't need to go to wing. Um, you can get into that later once you play more. We're going to start with a very beginner mode here. So this little E right here just shows your idol's current rank. When we hit 999 fans, we will upgrade to E, I think. I think we're F right now. Um, on the right here is your current stamina bar tension right here. If you read Katakana, it literally just says tension. It is uh, how much your idol likes you. She's pretty neutral with us. And then this little heart level zero is our memory appeal level. That'll go up as we get some morning commus. Like I said, don't tap the idols until this is level three or you will lose a little bit of this tension. Okay, we got four options at the bottom here. The bottom right one is not relevant at the moment. We don't click it. This thing is flashing. I'm going to click it real quick. It is our skill tree. So this skill tree is a big deal. We're going to come back here once we have a few skill points. A uh, little coffee mug says rest this week. It means that we're going to do no training at all to recover some of our stamina. Our stamina bar is full. We don't want to rest. I believe we left the confirmation on... I'm confirming that we have the confirmation on. We did. So if you click on rest, it will confirm. Do you want to rest? You can hit the little white cancel button. Okay. And then the thing you'll be hitting almost every time when you're in a produce mode here is called produce. If you read Katakana. So this is where the fun part of the simulation comes in. So we have not only six different rooms we can choose from to send our girl to to her training. We also have at the bottom here this third tab, which is the audition tab. Uh, we're going to try not to do any auditions at all very first season. You're really going to care about uh, these two rooms. So we do need to hit 999 fans, which is why the first season works a little bit differently than every other season. Um, top tab here is lesson rooms. You can see the stat growth we would get from the room right here. 
and you can also see any of our support idols are randomly spread throughout all the rooms. So we've got one idol here, two idols in the dance room, no idols in the visual room. And you can kind of tell this one gives 21 vocal, this one gives 22 dance, this one gives 20 visual. So the top three are sort of your main primary stat growths, vocal, vis vocal dance, and visual. And I highly recommend when you're just starting out to focus on one stat for each run. So you can make the same idol over and over with your produce card. We've got that SSR Maguru. We can make as many Magurus as we want. And we can make one that's good at vocal, one that's good at dance, one that's good at visual. Uh, so don't worry about screwing anything up permanently. You're good. You can always come back and do it again, and you're going to have to come back and do it again. The second row is sort of our secondary stats. Uh, so this first room is the radio room. You see we get not quite as much as 20 from all the different lesson rooms, but we do get 16 mental here. Uh, mental you're going to need in every single ro run. Mental is that health we saw during the audition. Um, the second room here is SP, that is skill points for buying skills on the skill tree, self-explanatory hopefully. And the third room here is photo shoot room, unless you're doing something really funky, you almost never use the photo shoot room. The only re reason you would use the photo shoot room is it is sort of the fan increase room. If you're on like the last week or two, the photo shoot room uh, can always be used even if you're completely out of stamina, like it almost never fails. And it does give you a little boost of fans. Um, so if you just need a few fans, you don't have enough stamina to like do any of the other rooms, you can do photo shoot room. You probably won't ever use it. Okay, so when you are just starting off, I recommend maybe just doing like a radio room and your preferred stat room. I think we're going for a vocal run here because our Chiyuki was good at vocal. Um, but season one, you're going to be doing the second tab here, which is the job tab, because the second tab gives more fans, and you need so few fans in season one that you're trying to avoid having to do an audition. So we're just going to do radio room, even though there's no support girls in the room. We're going to do radio. That's the success. You're going to see the room just leveled up here. Leveling up a room is random, but it is really nice because now we're getting even more stats from the room, even more fan. Um... So I'm going to go in, our week has counted back down to 7, we only need 841 fans now to get through. So we go right back in, right back to the radio room, um, and now we can see Chiyuki is in the radio room. All the idols have sort of uh, swapped places. Because Chiyuki is in the room, we'll actually see the little bar above her head level up. As that bar levels up, it increases the chance for the room to get excellence that that idol is in and we'll start seeing some support events. So I'll call those out when we see them. But for now, just gonna keep doing Radio Room. I've already hit level two, which is really nice. So we're getting double the fans from the room. So getting a bunch of mental here. Chiyuki's little bar levels up. We're getting some crazy luck. Our room has already hit level three. As you can see, our uh, stamina is draining here. So if we go back to the Radio Room, this little uh, trouble icon in the top right is 1%. So 1% of the time, supposedly it's actually higher than 1%, and it's a little bit of a lie here. But 1% of the time, we would actually fail the room. We won't get the fans, we'll actually lose a little bit of stats. Don't worry about it too much yet. We've got two girls in the room, which is awesome. If you ever see a room with like five girls in it, even if it's not necessarily the room you want to do, it's probably worth doing just to like raise the chance of getting excellence and the chance to see their support conversations. So we're going to keep doing radio room here. We're succeeding. This little indicator is saying that our mental hit over 100. And because our room leveled up so fast, we get Hazuki here. You just hit OK. And she's saying, hey, you already hit your fan limit. You're at that E rank. And if we look at the top here, it says clear. It means we're going to season two no matter what. Uh, so most of the time you're going to have to be spamming that radio room like the entire time and when, you're, when your bar gets to the flashing red here, you want to hit rest and take the week off, fill the bar up. That does take up a full week but now our bar is full again. And you want to be spamming that radio room pretty much the entire first season. Uh, we got really lucky here uh, which is kind of unfortunate so that we couldn't show like how close it can come. But I'm just going to keep doing the radio room. 
get in this mantle. We're gonna do that the entire season one, just as a sort of an easy beginner season one. Okay, now here is an event, a cutscene. Uh, we're gonna skip through it here, since it's the first time, and because we use the notebook, we can actually see what stats we're gonna get uh, from the communication. So if we choose this option here, we're gonna get only dance. If we choose here, we're gonna get dance and visual. If we choose here, we're gonna get vocal, dance, and visual. Um, it's always the same stat totals, so it sort of means like this is probably worth 20 dance, this is probably worth 10 of each, and this is probably a 5-10-5 split. Uh, but since we're going for a vocal run, run we're going to choose the option that has some vocal in it. There's vocal 5, dance 10, visual 5, and we get a little bit of mental and a little bit of SP. Okay, if you ever see it say morning like that, that means you're about to get a quick time event. Uh, so fortunately we did use a notebook, so we're going to be able to see during this quick time event one's going to be normal, one's going to be good, one's going to be perfect. You're always going to try and hit the perfect one. So here's the perfect one. It literally says it in English. We click that. We succeeded the quick time event, our tension's going up, and our memory appeal level's going up. So anytime you get a quick time event, if you're using the notebook, it's real easy, just hit the perfect. If you're not using the notebook, there are some guides online for which one to click, but it's going to be a quick time event, so it's going to be a little bit rough. Um, Hazuki's saying here we have enough points to buy a skill, so let's go look back at that skill tree again. So again, produce, rest, skill tree, and then this is sort of the auditions, so we'll get into that. Um, but we click on the skill tree, we do have 32 SP we can see in the top here. You can see the cost of every skill on the skill. Um, and then sort of what do you want to go for here? Every single hexagon skill is a passive. So like I said, for a, if you're building a leader, the passives are more important than normal. Um, but passives are always good. We did kind of want to build a vocal card. So I'm just looking. Our Chiyuki does have a pretty good vocal. So um, I'm going to go up the Chiyuki skill here, get this vocal passive from her. It's going to spend 20 of our SP. It's going to complete some beginner missions. So hexagons are passives, and then most important, which a lot of newbies don't realize, is that these circle skills are your actives. So if we click on this little button here, we can see all of our current skills. We just unlocked this passive at the bottom here, but you always start with four actives. It's going to be a uh, strength level one appeal of every different stat. So we've got a vocal one, a dance one, a visual one and then a little mental recovery skill, which I find to be useless. I know Cho likes the mental recovery skill to keep, but I typically get rid of this mental recovery skill first. And what I mean by that is you can only ever have four active skills. So when you go to buy a skill, uh, we can't do it quite yet, but when we go to buy this vocal 2.5, which as you can tell is quite a bit stronger than a vocal one skill, it is going to pop up a list with these four skills, and you're actually going to be choosing which one you're getting rid of. So I always get rid of the mental skill first, and then sort of start getting rid of the one times appeals for stats that I'm not building. Okay, so we spent our skill points. Our stamp's still pretty high. We're going to keep doing this radio room just as an example. There's a perfect. That's a random proc to just get double stats from the room. So we've got tons of mental from this run already. And then this... You can kind of see in the top left if you see your support card. This is a support event because we happen to do rooms with mono in it. We're getting some support events triggering from her. So we're, we're skipping through because we don't speak Japanese, but her support event gave us some stats. And that's why you want to just do rooms with um, your idols in them because as these bars fill up, you're going to trigger more and more support events and it's just free stats every time one of those triggers. So. We got some SP from that support event, which is really nice. So now we have 30 SP. So what I'm going to do is 30 SP is enough to actually grab this circle skill here. Ooh, failed season one feels bad. I, I'm so sorry, but that's just what happened. And that's why you've got enough, enough energy to do three produce runs in a day real quick. Because sometimes you just bomb out in season one. If you go through my clips, I didn't even fail a mental room. I just miscalculated and had, was five fans off one time for making Kaho. I was going for a true end run and I just bombed out season one. It happens. It happens. This game has a lot of RNG in it. That's why it's fun. 
Okay, so I'm going to buy this circle skill here for vocal 2.5. And here's the list of all of our current skills. So you're actually choosing which one to get rid of. I'm going to get rid of my mental 2.5. It says clearing that, learning vocal 2.5 instead. Cool. So now if we go to our list, our four active skills have two vocal skills in them, which is really nice if we're building the vocal unit. Okay, so we're going back to produce. I'm going to keep doing radio room to sort of give an example of what you might be doing in your run. And let's say your radio room never leveled up, you had to rest a lot, you're on the final season and you don't have enough fans yet. Well that is where these auditions come into play. So if we look on the bottom right here, um, you can actually see this changes every single day, kind of like in the, the versus PvP mode we saw where like visuals number one right now. This actually changes every single week in our produce runs what the judges care about most. So right now the number one judge cares about vocal, which works out for us, but in season one it shouldn't matter. You should be able to win just by slamming the first judge no matter what. This third tab is our auditions and really the relevant thing here is this bottom right number. This is how many fans you're going to get. If you remember, we needed 999 fans to clear season one. So if we do this audition, no matter what, if you get first or second place in the audition, you get this number of fans. Um, some other things that are a little bit relevant, these top numbers here, this is like the stat total for your AI opponents and how much mental they have. And this is your stat total and how much mental you have. Um, it kind of scares you most of the time because like, it's saying that they have crazy high stat totals, but they usually don't play very well, so it's a little bit of a trick. Um, but we only need 999 fans, so if you're just starting out, you can do this very first audition. It's very easy. And uh, just head in here and clear this Season 1. At least do one audition if you need it to get the fan count to make it to Season 2. Uh, because we have a notebook, we can see you get a little bit of a pep talk uh, with your idol before you head into each audition. One of them is going to make them happier, one of them is going to make them sadder, and one of them is going to have no effect at all. So we use the notebook, we can see what the happy one is. We do it. She's still kind of, kind of not smiling, but it's going up. Okay, so we're back into an audition. This is just like that PvP mode. Um, unfortunately, all of our idols have completely random skills, so we don't have any good vocal skills. But I'm still going to hit the vocal judge here because we should be able to, to get the number one judge beaten no matter what. So we're hitting for 500. Enemies are hitting for like 300. It's a little bit tricky when you don't have support idols that are all the same stat. But here's a, here's a vocal skill. As you can see, we slammed that number one judge. We got tons of stars. We're getting an easy win. So this skill, so when you come into auditions during a produce mode, you are basically getting one possible active skill from each of your support cards, and then um, the four active skills on your current card. So you can see here, this is our, our one times appeals from each, uh, each different stat, and this is the 2.5 that we bought before coming in here. And then uh, the four supports that are not in the guest slot each contribute one skill. So this is our SSR Chiyuki. She's coming in with a vocal 2.5, which is crazy good. And then these are our SRs coming in with the two times appeals. So Choco's helping us out a lot with a vocal 2. Jury and Natsuha kind of focused on different stats, not helping quite as much. Um, but you're going to get three of them randomly, and then each time you use one, we'll go to a new one. I think it has to go through all eight skills before it starts cycling. I don't think you can like use a skill and see that skill again. So we're just gonna blast through this audition real quick, get the win. Like I said, if you get first place or second place, which should be easy to do in these early weeks, um, you get all the fans that you need. Okay. So there we go, we got 69 stars, second place got 12 stars. And again, in these early auditions, it's really easy to get first or second because there's only three, three players. It's you and two AIs, so as long as you can beat one of the AIs, you're in top two. You get a little bit of stats from doing auditions, but it's not as much as doing a room. Uh, so definitely try and do as few auditions as possible, just the bare minimum to make it through. 
Here's a produce event. It is our SSR, so we get a super cute Maguru cutscene. USA! USA! And sometimes you don't get an option, you just get whatever stats the card wants to give. So here we are. It is the end of the season. We're checking to make sure that we have enough fans to make it to the next season, and we do. And here's the start of season two. So that's kind of the cycle. We kind of go through um, each season, make sure you have enough fans until you're through four seasons, and then your run is over. Um, this can happen. Holy moly, did we lose stream? All right. Uh, sometimes between seasons, the game just lags. And you gotta refresh the page. And that's not a big deal, because it saves after every single week you do, even if you're like in the middle of an audition. Okay, we made it through our first season, we're getting a lot of rewards here. Um, our stamina is completely drained, so we're gonna rest this week. Getting a little bit of stamina back. As you can see, we are now in season two. We've used one week already, so we've got seven more weeks to get 5,000 more fans. I think it's 10,000 fans to get from to get to the D rank. Um, so there's, I mean, we've gotten super lucky with Radio Room, but normally there's no way to get that number of fans um, just from doing like Radio Room and stuff. So normally you are going to want to make sure you do auditions. If you're really bad at auditions, you're just starting out, you could do something like this first easy level audition three times. But I believe in you. I think you can at least do the second level audition two times or the third level audition one. What we're going to do is vocals are a really good stat. We're going to wait until these judges cycle for vocal to be in first place. So while we wait for vocal to be in first place, let's start training our vocal up because we've only got 98. We've got three girls in the vocal room. This is super lucky. Gonna do this room. Get all their bars going up. You can see we hit 100 vocals, so our vocals E rank now doesn't really mean much. Vocals still not first place here, so we're gonna keep going. Um, we've got 215 mental already from our really crazy early run, uh, so we probably don't need mental at all right now. Um, I recommend by the end of a run, like if you're heading into like end of season three, near season four, you probably want around 300 mental, and then as much of your primary stat as possible. We're going vocal. We're getting perfect. This has been a really lucky run so far. Yours is probably going to be harder as you start off, um, but you'll get there eventually. Vocal's still not first place, so we're just going to keep leveling it. Um, this is where kind of luck and personal preference comes into play. There's two girls in the mental room, so I kind of like getting the support bonds, but we don't really need more mental at this point. So we'll keep doing vocal room. 8% chance to fail is not too bad, so we'll do it. We'll risk that failure. Okay, um, one thing I did not mention is you can do auditions no matter what your stamina is at. So even if you're completely out of fatigue, if you need the fans and the audition looks good, you can do an audition, your stamina does not affect it. Okay, I don't know if this is a morning event or a regular event. Looks like it's a regular event. So this one's nice, we had to just choose straight up which stat you want 20 points in. We use the notebook, we can see what they each give. Let's get 20 vocal. Always nice just to get some free stats. Looks like we are getting some support events here from Chiyuki. So we'll skip through this. There's some visual from Chiyuki. Feels kind of bad. She's a vocal card that gives us visual. Okay, so like I said, we're out of stamina, but our vocal judge is now finally first. It's completely random doesn't go in any particular order. It could like technically be this same order every single time the entire season, but that never happens. Um, before we go into an addition though, let's spend our skill points. So we've got 58 skill points, and uh, Maguru does have a vocal to dance to appeal on her, which is pretty nice. So even though we're not going for dance, um, this is a really strong skill. So I think we'll buy the dance passive to unlock the next tier in her tree and then buy this active. So we're gonna buy this. Um, it's got dance two in it, so we may as well replace the dance one with it, right? And so now our stack looks like vocal one, visual one, vocal 2.5, vocal dance two. So we've got more than half of Maguru's cards are vocal, so hopefully we get more vocal options when we're fighting 
in this audition here. Vocal judge is first. We're going to go to this audition. I'm going to try to beat the really hard audition. And if we fail, that's okay. You don't lose any stats from it. We've still got three more weeks to try and win. So we'll do the hard audition here. We'll get that smiley face up. Maybe if we don't lag. Okay, we're finally to a little bit of a yellow smiley face. So what that yellow smiley face means is this memory feel in the bottom right here is going to start out a little a little fuller than normal. Uh, once you get to a red smiley face, I think it starts like right here, 75% or so up. And so you can use this memory feel really early in the audition. Uh, but we don't have that luxury today. We did, however, fortunately get a really strong vocal card here. Uh, you may be asking yourself, if I have the Meguru Vocal 2.5 and like a Chiyuki Vocal 2.5, which one's better? The answer is um, your produce idol is stronger than your support idol. So if they're the exact same, they're both like Vocal 2.5s, use your produce idols. If your support idol's got a 2.5 and your produce idol's got like a 2 times appeal, they're going to be about the same. The support might even be a little bit stronger. But we've got Meguru's 2.5, which is probably the strongest card in our whole stack. We're going to start out slamming that vocal judge for 4,000 points, which is a ton. And we're going to keep going from there. So the enemies hit it pretty hard too, but fortunately we got Chiyuki's vocal 2.5 as well. Hitting those perfects. Easy first play. They got the last appeal, but we got two of the uh, judges' 33% health stars, and then we got the top appeal stars as well, which is the most important. So with 28 stars, we'll hit first or second almost no matter what here. But we'll keep going for as many as we can get. Our link appeal is unlocked. We'll hit both judges for it. Like I said, we'll, sh we'll show it off, but if you wait too long, you'll miss the link appeal here which I think just counts as a bad. I'm not sure what the game is doing. There it goes. So we still get the cute cutscene from the Link appeal. There's Maguru. So yeah, if you miss the whole thing, it does not hit very hard at all. It's soft. We're running out of mental here, so we're just going for goods. We don't quite get anything else. We actually got second place. Because one of the AIs got enough points from like the two other judges um, that they beat us, but we got second place. That's all you need to get the fan count. So we'll get 10,000 fans from this for doing the hardest audition. Um, that was a little rough for me, so if you're starting out, maybe do the second hardest audition twice instead. Um, it does mean you get fewer weeks to get stats, but there's our fan count. We hit rank D, which means we're going to be going into season three. Okay, still low on stamina. Want to rest? We've cleared the auditions, so we don't, or we've cleared the fan count up here, so we don't need to worry about auditions. Let's try and get some more stats to get ready for the harder auditions as they come. I'm gonna keep working on our vocal. I think 225 mental is plenty. You're gonna you're gonna pick your own preference for how much how much health you want. Uh, there's two girls in the radio room, so I'm gonna do that just for a little bit more mental. No promises at all, I know. Yeah, we haven't even seen it yet. Welcome back to chat, my friend. Okay, so that's the end of the season. Um, haven't been able to show off how promises work. That is the one other thing that you really want Katakana for. Um, so again, if you just learn your Katakana, this game's going to get real easy to navigate. Okay, so season three, we've got eight weeks. We need 34,000 fans this time. Um, this is the hardest season probably for when you're just starting off because you still want to hit that fan count while also getting stats. So what you can do is like any time the stat you're going for is in either first or second place, you can go for an easy audition. So right now vocals in third, so we're going to train up some stats. But I'm going to show sort of what I think is probably the best beginner way. Alright, we saw where it said morning. And then I clicked off early because I'm a horrible person, but that means quick time event. So let's get that perfect. We're getting that smiley face up. We're getting our memory appeal up. No promises. Vocal's still third. We're out of stamina. So we're going to rest here. Feels bad. We want to do some auditions here. 
Okay, looks like we're getting a support event from Choco. I think it's visual. Yep, getting tons of visual from all of our events here. Okay, vocals first place. So what you can do if it's season three, you're gonna probably want to do this three times as this very easiest audition gives you 15,000 fans. So as you can see, we need 34,000. If we do this just three times, we'll make it through the season. That's wasting, sort of wasting three weeks in season three where you don't really gain stats, you're just doing auditions to unlock all of season four and give it another eight weeks for training. So I highly recommend um, once you get better, you can try doing like the second level or even the third level so that you only have to do two or even one auditions in season three. But if you're just starting out, oof, yeah, this is why. Just, uh, just go for this easiest audition and it should be pretty easy to win, but you do need to win it three times. So we're hitting it pretty hard. Mm. Oh, and then um, another thing, since we bought that dance passive, this little tray here shows what passives have proc this turn, and you can click on it to see how much of a buff they are. So sometimes you'll see like three dance and a visual here, and you're like, okay, I should use a dance skill, but you click on it, and it's like three of your little 5% dance have proc, and then you've got like 100% visual proc. So it's actually better to use a visual skill that turn. Um, just a just a little tip for figuring out what your passives are. And then if you ever have a skill that buffs yourself, um, some produce cards have it. You can click on pause right here and this will list all of your current buffs. If the judges ever get debuffed, you can kind of click to see what's going on with them. Um, but it's going to be a lot of learning because most of the buff skills and things are sort of in kanji. It's a little hard to read. Cool, here's our vocal and dance. Let's see how hard it hits. Ooh, hits for 4,000 damage. So we got top appeal on dance as well. Okay, so that audition was pretty easy. We got first place. Skipping through everything. Nothing to uh, worry about clicking on here. Get a little bit of stats from the audition. And then we'll see, looks like we might get some communications here. So we get to choose what stat we want again. Go on pure vocal for hopefully an easier run than normal. A lot of people when they start trying to true end will choose two stat. Um, so once you start getting better and you get really good support cards, you kind of have like two of your supports in visual, two of your supports in vocal, kind of build them both up. But you'll figure it out. Uh, vocal second place here, so we can go for the audition again. We still need 19,000 fans. We're going for this really easy audition. We're going to focus the second place judge and hopefully get second place just to get our fans up. So here we go. I say I'm doing that, but I'm actually going to cheat a little bit here because we have this vocal dance too. I might actually go for first place judge. But we could have gone for vocal, alright. Do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, we're gonna just snag first place here, because I know what I'm doing. But definitely focus the, uh, the judge whose stat you're good at. I trust you guys, you'll learn pretty quick. And then we'll go for visual judge as well. Easy peasy. We need to do one more audition and we'll unlock season 4. I'm going to go through these last few seasons pretty fast here. Um, I think there's one more thing to explain during a produce run here, which is uncapped skill. So let's go look at our skill tree real quick. So we've got 56 SP. Um, and we don't really have a good one to pick yet, but I'm just going to show you. So these square skills right here, uh, you can pretty easy to tell. It's got like the up arrow and everything. Um, what it means is if you click on your character's stats right here, you can see we're at 300 out of 500 vocal. So 500 is the cap. Once we hit 500 vocal, it can't go up any higher unless you buy these square skills with the little up arrows. This one will increase our visual cap by 100, which is why this Maguru card is really weird. It's got dance, and then it's got vocal, and then it's got a visual uncap. Illumination stars are crazy. 
But anyways, if we bought this skill, if we went all the way up this tree and bought this skill, our visual would now be 134 out of 600. Um, so that's how you can get higher than 500 in different stats. Um, I think what we're going to go for here is uh, this vocal two times appeal on Choco. So we're going to buy her passive, five vocal two times. Um, I kind of picked weird supports here, so I'm going to get rid of the visual skill. Now if you look, we got vocal one, vocal 2.5, vocal and dance two, vocal two. Um, what you will see based on what your supports are is let's say mono also had the vocal two skill here you can't actually buy the same skill twice so if choco and mono had the same skill you would see this one would now cost sp0 and if you tried to buy it it would just flip over and it wouldn't do anything because uh, you can't you can't buy the same skill twice so that's why usually people will run srs and ssrs um, if they're going for the same stat because they have slightly different actives SRs are going to have the 2 point or the 2.0 uh, That Choco has and the SSRs have the 2.5 so that way you can kind of buy two different skills from them It's a little more complicated, but something to keep in mind if you're wondering why you can't buy a second skill Okay, so we're going for our last audition here, and then we're blazing through so I'm a little bit over time and By a little bit. I mean a lot of bit over time, but here we go we're going to create this card, we're going to go for all of our fans, unlock the last season, and just blast through the season, get as much vocal and mental as we can. Uh, getting more vocal is more important than getting more mental. In fact, at this point, if we wanted to, we could completely skip on mental, because we're not going to do any more auditions. Jamming to our J-pop. Hit that perfect, snipe the last hit, easy stars. Um, once again, I'm going to link the Shiny Colors Discord in chat real quick. It is the English speaking Discord. But you absolutely should hit that up if you have any questions. I try to answer questions there a lot. There are some people who are like grade 7, which is the highest PvP grade, hang out in there all the time. Alright, C rank. C rank is as high as you need to get when you are starting out. Do not worry about hitting B rank. When you're starting, just work on getting these stats up now that you've hit C rank. We've cleared Season 3. We will get 8 more weeks in Season 4. We're getting some conversations here. We're getting free vocal from it. I'm going to blaze through this until we get maybe to a promise. Okay, is this... Oh, we're getting two conversations in a row for vocal. That's plus 40 vocal. This is why you have SSR produced cards. Okay, mm we're going to keep grinding this vocal till we hit like 500. Which we should be able to do. There's our vocal room finally leveling up. Remember when Radio Room leveled up three times in like the first three weeks? Yeah, vocal didn't. Alright, 4% fail. We're going to keep going for it. Um, if you're going for two stats, like you're going vocal visual, uh, definitely try and hit up the room that has more support idols in it, because that's free stats right there. But I'm just sort of uh, grinding through this mindlessly. I'm coming into Season 4. Now you will see there's a fan count at the top. You need 40,000 fans to make it through Season 4, but it doesn't unlock any more weeks for you. What it unlocks is the ability to go into a very difficult audition called Wing. And if you Wing win, you get plus 20 to every stat. And then you go into Wing Finals. If you win Wing Finals, you get plus 40 to every stat. However, you're probably not winning Wing for your first few uh, runs. So don't even worry about unlocking Wing, is what I would say. Um, we're getting close to capping out our vocal at 500 here. So we may start doing a little bit more mental just to get this card really strong. Let's see. Nope, no promises. So I can't even show you what that looks like. We're going to get through the last five, five weeks here of this season. Looks like another conversation. No vocal choices here. I guess we'll go for dance because our ability hits for vocal dance too. And then, okay, 
Here's another promise. Just hit those perfects for the quick times. And after every promise, there's or after every morning communication, there's a chance you get a promise. I say that, but we're never gonna see one this run. Feels really bad. Uh, so promises are a little bit tricky. Uh, since I don't have an example to give you, I will just kind of have to explain it. Um, a promise means that the girl is asking to do one of four things. She is saying either I want to do a vocal lesson, I want to do a dance lesson, I want to do a visual lesson, or I want to rest. And that can be, um, I think, three different time frames. Either this week, next week, or two weeks from now. I'm going to pop something up on the screen real quick. If you've learned katakana, you're halfway there, unless you're playing with Rinzei, because Rinzei speaks in kanji for whatever reason. Sorry, Rinzei peas. Um, but this little overlay right here is sort of a cheat sheet. I tend to uh, keep it up sometimes when I am streaming. Um, but basically, the first one is all the kanji you need to know. If you see one line and then the weak kanji, it means one week from now. Two lines and then the weak kanji, two weeks from now. You see a little hat and the weak kanji, uh, that means this week. And then the katakana for visual lesson, you can literally read it out in English if you know katakana, a uh, vocal lesson or dance lesson. Um, and then the, the last one is sort of like a little person standing next to a tree and that means rest. Um, so they're going to ask for those promises. On the left is yes, on the right is no. Try to always say yes if you can do the lesson, unless it's like the last week and you need to do an audition and then you say no. Um, if you don't do the promise, they lose a little bit of tension. If you do the promise, they gain tension and a lot of memory appeal. That's why we're only at level 1 memory appeals, because we haven't gotten any promises yet. Um, getting a bunch of promises is all up to luck, and it is the only way to really get like a level 5 um, link appeal, which is crazy good, gives you a bunch of missions done, and the memory appeal level that you have at the end of your run, so we've got level 1 which is really bad, it's like as low as you can It gives a straight up scaling buff to all of your stats. So if we even hit level 2, we'd, the card would probably be 20% stronger than if we come out with level 1. If you come out with level 5, the card is crazy powerful. So that's why you're going to be producing the same card a lot until you get level 5. Um, the memory appeal is most important for your center card. So that's why I didn't explain it earlier, but your center's memory appeal is the one that your whole team uses in PvP mode. Um, so really grinding out if you're going to for some PvP wins. Okay, so this pop-up will happen if you don't have enough fans in the final week. She's like, hey, make sure you do an audition to get enough fans. But um, we're going to ignore her because we're not going for wing. We're just getting as many stats as we can. Our vocals maxed. Let's buy some more mental here. Or train some more mental. And that's the end of the run. This is our card. We got 500 vocal, over 400 mental. It's an excellent card for PvP. Sadly, it only has a level 1 memory appeal. Um, but that's okay. So the season's over. We didn't hit the fan count to go into wing. So Hazuki's going to be all sad which is okay for now. Make sure you cheer up Hazuki later with those those wing wins. But we're starting out, we're not going for the wing win. Um, this summary page, I didn't realize at first, but this top number right here is actually the memory appeal that you got. So we got 12 out of 100, which is why it's only level one. It does cap out at 100. Um, it turns into skill points you can spend at the end. And then this is our fan count, which also turns into skill points we can spend at the end. So you go next. Now do not hit this pink button when you get to this summary page here. You want to actually hit this button right here to go back to your skill page. And you can see we have a ton of skill points. At the very end you usually get a big boost of skill points that you can spend. Um, since this is a vocal card, what you can do is just like grab as many vocal passives as you can see. And they're probably all going to be good while you're just starting out. Um, once you care more about what they are, definitely hit up that English wiki and figure out what all the different cards do. Uh, you can start kind of learning the kanji forum, like this one. I can read it, it just says the requirement is monos on the team, 
The proc rate is 30%, it can proc twice, and it gives you 3% vocal up for the turn. Okay, so then you hit back. This is to finalize the card. It says, hey, there's 6 SP you haven't spent. Uh, the cheapest skill ever in the game so far is 20. So if you've got less than 20, you're good to go. Hit this pink button. You get your SSR cutscene again. And now, after the end of a produce run, our produce card has turned into a festival card. It is C rank. This is totally fine. We get a bunch of training tickets at the end and some items, uh, which is really nice. EX skills you can completely ignore. You literally cannot use these until you are true ending cards, which is probably a month or so in the future for most of you. Um, you can lock this card so you don't accidentally sell it. You can give it a mark. I'm going to say, hey, this is a really strong vocal card. And then you just hit OK here. Uh, you can you know, check like, oh, what supports did I use? Uh, what memory appeal level did I hit? Level 1 feels bad. Okay, so we've gone in. Uh, this pop-up happens all the time, especially when you're starting off. Hey, you did a bunch of missions. Guess what? We made it to Season 4. That's pretty damn good for a newbie. So we're going to get a lot of rewards here. So here's like seven different rewards. Latido, I appreciate the follow. Thanks so much for uh, lighting that torch. We're going to get a love lamp in the chat. Appreciate you. Uh, we do shiny colors every single weekday morning. Tomorrow morning, though, I am going to be playing through Fire Emblem Thracia 776. Uh, we got to the point where we have, Jesus, so many missions. All right. As you can see, we actually did some event missions this time. Uh, so we are getting some event points. So if you're getting event missions cleared, make sure afterwards. All right. It's forcing us to go to the event page. Cool, cool, cool. Um, but you can go and either click on this event right here and then go to the shop icon, or you can go to the shop and click on the event shop right here. But we've got 45,000 points just from making that card to season four. So there we go. We're buying some copies of the Kaho and Chiyuki. And now we're not worried. Those are the only things that are time sensitive on this event is getting like as many copies of these cards as we can. So we've almost got every Kaho copy. We've got one Chiyuki copy just in case the event runs out. And like I said, this idol, we can go in here, go to this Evolve, go to this Kaho, and boom, look at that. Her max level is now 65. We're getting tons of cool visual skills on her that we can use in our next run. So we should really think about leveling up this Kaho and using it. I do have to end the stream ASAP though. So here we go. So we go into Fest now. Actually, let's go to our idol list. So if you remember, there's five different rows here. So our Maguru card is still here as a produce card that we can use in future runs. Try and make our visual next time. Try and make our dance next time. It's totally up to you. But from that run, we have created this festival card. This is the one that we locked and marked as vocal. It's got all the skills that we bought, all these passives that we bought. Look at all those vocal passives. And so this number right here is sort of an estimated strength of it. The card we made is 758, and the cards that you start with are 10. So now what we do is we go into Fess here. This third button allows us to change our units up. We take Chiyuki out here. We replace her with this 758. Look at this. Our vocal's going from 75 to 850. Boom. Maguru's here. We've got the other Illumination Stars in here for that Link Appeal. And we're going to play Fest one more time, just to see what's changed. We're going to go and, and do a grade mission. We're going to play on easy. This tension check sort of uh, is randomly determined how high your memory appeal is. This is as high as it can get. We're getting lucky. We're going in here. As you can see, our memory appeal is getting pretty full already. We didn't really get our... Uh, our good skills from Maguru. She's only got two of them. Oh, I didn't change them up. Feels bad. All right, but our vocal skill is really high now from that Maguru. So instead of hitting for like 100, we're hitting for 2,000. And what you want to do is you want to go and make all of your cards, replace all five of your girls on this team, and suddenly you'll actually be doing something useful. Okay, so here's the Link appeal. We're hitting the good. We're getting the cutscene. 
hitting so hard because her stats are crazy good. Hitting all the judges. Knocking them out. Look at all these passives procking from her. We're going to try and go for the first place judge here. Ooh, I hit the bad because I'm bad. But we still got top appeal. Easy win. And now, now instead of getting zero stars in these appeals, we're getting 62 stars. Just from replacing one unit, you can replace all five. We're getting 40 bucks from it. Because we played a grade mode, our grade will actually now be increasing at the end of the season. Um, it ends on the 31st. So at the end of the season, we should go up to level 2, which means we're getting that Hazuki seal. So what was the last thing I wanted to show? Right. We go into... Yeah, nine minutes till I have a work meeting. <laughs> Fortunately, I can do it online. All right, so last thing, once you slot her in, um, how the skills work in the PvP mode is uh, every single unit brings two skills uh, to the table here. So you click on this little skill list. So out of the four skills that we bought during our run, you can only bring two in to the PvP mode. So we're going to uncheck the vocal one, replace it with the vocal dance two, so she's using a Vocal 2.5 and a Vocal Dance 2. Make sure you do this every time you swap your units out because their skills will get reset if you pull them off and put them back on again. Uh, so now we won't get, won't accidentally get that Vocal 1 in our tray when we play. Maguru is only going to come in anytime we see Maguru at the bottom. It's going to be one of our two really good skills. If we replace all five of our units here, um, you know, coming in here, pick and wing, we make like a really strong Yuika. She's good at visual. She is for 3.5. That's crazy. We can replace our visual card with Yuika. And then anytime Yuika pops up, we can like KO the visual judge in one hit. And that's shiny colors. That's all there is to it. Um, if you want to learn how to true end, I highly recommend watching any of my other streams. That's pretty much all I've been doing for the last three weeks. We go for true ends in those. It's basically just doing a lot of auditions while also winning League. Um, but yeah, hopefully that's a really good tutorial for you guys just starting out. I saw Pokemans. Oh yeah, yeah, let's let's pull real quick. Um, did we get enough gems? We sure did. Let's turn in all these missions real quick. That was our second time playing Fest for the day, so that's all our daily missions done. First time winning fest so we got a weekly mission getting all these training tickets beginners have it so good right now with these free daily temple we're gonna pull 10 more so once you hit 3000 gems which you will be doing i can't stay for the five minute one i feel really bad about it but uh we'll do this 10 pull i actually have to leave for nine o'clock but if you've just started with us right now you are getting another free 10 pull so let's see. Boom! There's the SSR Amana. Feels good. This account is getting chocolatey wasted. Another SR support. So I highly recommend every time you hit 3,000 gems, pull on the uh, pull on the current banner that is active. So right now it's the Rinze banner. You could save a little bit for the Hiori coming out soon. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate you guys showing up. Thanks so much for all the follows. I think we got like three follows today. I love it. I'm going to upload this to YouTube as well. Cut out some of the middle stuff. Um, try and make it a little bit more tutorial-y. If there's anything I forgot, hit me up on Discord. I am in the Shiny Colors English Discord. I am around to answer any questions you have. You can also follow me on Twitter and message me there. I don't Twitter nearly as much. Um, but if you direct message me on Twitter, I will respond. And then, like I said, YouTube archives are going to have this video and many others. So cool. So we got a really strong dance support in this Amana. Feels good. Definitely keep pulling until you feel like you have enough SSRs that you like don't need to pull right away. Um, if Hiori is your favorite, we are getting a new Hiori PSSR when this banner ends in two days. So if you're just starting out, Hiyori is your favorite. You could say for her, my wife is doing that. Um, we are ending here today. So that is it for the stream. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate everyone. I appreciate all the follows. Tomorrow morning for five hours playing Thracia 776. Starting out with some save state arena bull 
to get everyone to max level so we can just grind through the rest of the game. And then a Sunday morning playing Super Nintendo Legend of Zelda Link to the Past randomizer speedrun. Awesome. Thanks so much everyone for watching. Welcome to Shiny Colors if this is uh, your first time playing it. It is really fun. If you learn Katakana, you'll be able to figure out most of it. I'll see you guys next time. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Keep your lamps lit. Thanks, guys.